Hey guys, NJ here. Today we're looking at something pretty exciting. If you remember, I did a review a while back on this guy. This is the BG-8S cell checker. Quite a cool little cell checker. Um, but unfortunately, one of the things about it was that I couldn't really go into uh, much detail about this battery go technology. Um, this utilized, or the idea was that it utilized a new type of connector, which was the iXt60. And can you see there, we've got a third pin right in the middle there. And the idea was that the battery <coughs> <clears throat> would have some onboard sensors and it would actually be able to send some statistics via I guess some some telemetry back to this which we could then read very frustrating that we can actually uh, look at any more of that back then but today we do have finally um, one of these batteries that does indeed use this iXt60 connector and give us the uh, delicious telemetry to have a look at um, you can see that connector right there so when that mates up with this guy you'll be able to have you'll basically have a three wire connection and you can see that telemetry wire here um, in terms of how it's actually wired in to be honest with you I would have liked to have seen them at least kind of heat shrink this together in the middle just so that this doesn't flap around and snag um, but other than that the battery looks like it's um, pretty decently built. Um, the sensors that are in here we'll, we'll have a look at that um, I'm not sure where they'll be placed um, I guess some will be in the end here, maybe there'll be some temperature sensing between the cells, I'm not sure, I'm certainly not going to cut this open for you to show you, uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't, this is brand new, I want to go out and fly it, uh, see how they do. So we can hope that more of this um, technology makes its way into other um, battery manufacturers because this could be a really useful thing. Anyway, let's plug it in and see what we get. Now, you will see, there we go, it's registered, the old battery go page has come up, that's good news, and you'll see straight away, look, we've got information on each cell, and we don't have the cell balancing cable plugged in, so yeah, very, very cool. Um, so we can see there the individual uh, cell voltage, we've also got an internal temperature being displayed there of 29 degrees, so there is a temperature sensor in there somewhere, and it seems to suggest that there is 50% uh, of uh, pack capacity in there. Um, if we scroll down now, we can see some information about the battery. So regardless of what labeling is on there, um, we actually have some information on the product right there, which is, I mean, just that alone's a great thing. The fact that you can know a bit of information. So we know it's a Charsoon battery. Uh, we've got its production date. So uh, this was made on the 17th of the 8th, 2017. We know it's a light poly chemistry. It is a four cell, 4S, and it is 1500 milliamps in capacity, um, which of course will be uh, in accord with what's written on the outside of the pack. We can also see from a stat point of view that this will take a 5C charge or five times capacity in terms of how many amps we can chuck into this guy. And it is an 80C discharge. So that's really cool. In terms of the kind of the live stuff um, or the stuff that's going to be recorded, we also have four uh, icons down here. Now this one here, you can see in the corner, which has like the recycling logo, um, that's actually telling us how many um, how many cycles the battery's had. So how many times it's been discharged, recharged. Um, so that's a great thing. I know there are some of you that are super organized and probably put numbers on your batteries and write down statistics about which one flew well and which one's got what in terms of internal resistance like you know I'm slightly jealous that you're that way inclined because I'm not I just chuck them all in my bag and I go fly and uh, yeah I'll just maybe put one battery in a separate pocket if I know it's going bad and, and not to include it in my uh, parallel charging uh, makeup so this is really cool because we can now start collect we now know how many how many cycles that battery's had which is that's just brilliant just if it was only that alone I'd be happy we also have these three here. Now, uh, the one beneath that with the up arrow, that one is saying how many times this has been overcharged. So hopefully that number will never go above zero. Um, if you don't have um, a charger that uses um, battery go technology, um, or if you're just using a standard charger, or maybe even a cheap charger that you know you probably shouldn't be using, maybe then there's a risk that you might be overcharging. Good that you can actually keep an eye on this figure. But as I said, really, certainly if you're running any ISTD chargers, that should remain at zero always. Up at the uh, the next one across here, we've got like this, it looks like a kind of a circle with kind of sunbeams off of it. This is your over temperature um, count. So. 
I don't know what that limit is, but whatever they have deemed outside the realms of normality with t in terms of operating temperature, if you've heated the pack up, probably through over discharging it or, or just ragging it way too hard, it will give you a number next to that to say, yeah, last flight, you definitely went and uh, cooked this battery or, you know, again, maybe if it's getting too hot, it's a sign of internal resistance going. But again, we can always look up at the internal resistance during a charge with an ISDT, certainly, and see how that is fair so again cool little thing that it's accounting that there and then here underneath it we've got the over discharge figure now this is probably the one which a few of you might be more nervous about seeing rise in the figure so um, one thing that I will say in terms of battery health I'm always really really careful about making sure I come in when I'm supposed to and not over discharging my pack it's a really quick way to shorten the life of your pack and you've got to remember these cells high discharge cells they're so good at holding their voltage all the way up holding that high current and then all of a sudden as they run out of capacity right at the end the shelf is really quite uh, pretty pretty damn aggressive it's not like the old if you I don't know how long you've been in RC but if we go back to things like when we were flying with uh, you know nickel metal hydrides and nickel cadmium where you had the the kind of gentle progression you could really tell when when the uh, the voltage was starting to sag me a much more linear gentle inclination down to uh, the uh, end of the capacitance with with these lipolys as I said it's just loads of power loads of power loads of power nothing and then you, you can literally fall out the sky if you're not careful but over discharging is really bad so try and keep that at a zero that's really good training for you if you're someone who just flies till the, the quad falls out the sky so in terms of that I think that's that's all really really cool information we also have one more menu here if I just hold down here we have an exception record now the exception record is going to be a place where it logs all of those things I was telling you about so I presume it's going to put a date next to it and if we've over discharged it will put that in there and if we've uh, over temperatured it will attach that to it so we'll actually get a log here Again, Again, just so cool. ISDT are just the absolute bee's knees at coming up with great innovation. And as I said, I just hope they add more of this technology into other battery manufacturers. Hopefully some of your favorite battery manufacturers because it, yeah, it's just super cool. So there's a quick look at the whole battery go thing. Really liking that. In terms of the cells and how good they are, well, I've got yet to test that, so I'm going to have to go out and fly these. They seem to be about the right weight uh, for a 1500 milliamp boasting an 80C discharge. If you ever see a 1500 milliamp 80 or 90C discharge and it is suspiciously light, and the cell density just, it, I mean, if it looks like these these cells are thin, you know, look, here's, here's another uh, 75C, is another one of my favourites, this uh, AC 1500 milliamp, and these are great, these are really high current handling. You know, we're looking at a very, very similar size. You know, if you, that's always really indicative of a good high C cell as from a, a manufacturer that's actually telling the truth about their C ratings is cell density. If it doesn't weigh anything, the chances are they're lying and it may be very good for the first 10 cycles, but that will quickly start to degrade in my experience. So I'll be testing those out. I was also sent the 1300 milliamp version, also ATC. Now I will say this, there's actually only about five grams in difference between these two. So if I were you, I would just quite simply go for the 1500 milliamp because the 1500 milliamp at ATC will hold its voltage and high current better than 1300 milliamp rated at ATC. So if I was you for the extra, you know, five or six grams, just go for the 1500 milliamp. There really um, isn't too much in it. You can see this is a little bit thicker, um, but uh, higher, higher density cells. But yeah, that's what I think about those. Now, the other product I was sent, and I'll put links in the description to all this stuff, um, was this. So this is the BG Linker. And this, again, if you don't have an ISDT product, but you want to take advantage of this technology, this will allow you to connect your um, IXT60 like so, Ooh, the right way round, like that. And then this guy goes into your PC and there is Mac and Windows operating software. And I'll just put a screenshot up of what that looks like. Um, so instead of seeing it on the display like you would here with the battery checker or on the um, charger that supports battery go, you'll be able to view that information on your PC or Mac or laptop or whatever. Um, and that's quite a cheap thing. So they've really thought about trying to cater for everyone at all stages. Again, ISDT, you, you guys are brilliant. You just come up with cool stuff. You know, I've still got my very first ISDT product. I've had that well over a year, year and a half maybe, um, this 150 watt 
SC608. Still goes everywhere with me, my field charger, absolutely brilliant. They do also, the, another one they've sent me which I haven't reviewed yet, um, but I will uh, take a look at. This is the Colossal 1000 watt uh, T8, and this has the battery go technology built into it. Interestingly, both on input side and obviously output side, so that's quite an interesting thing. But yeah, they're always updating the software for these guys as well, so um, you can update it with a update cable, it's very cheap. This one you update uh, actually through the uh, micro USB. I wish they just put micro USB on all this stuff instead of the kind of the barrel jack, uh, headphone jack type style of updater. But yeah, this guy, I'm sure it'll be just as brilliant and solid as the others. If you're a big parallel charger and charge tons of packs and require a thousand watts, uh, you're mad if you do, but some people do. And of course, if you've got a strong enough uh, DC uh, power supply to provide that kind of amperage. So yeah, there we go. That is a look at the battery go stuff. And uh, yeah, super impressed. Looking forward to flying these cells and collecting some data. I'll revisit this and we'll talk about it more once I'm at that point. Okay, I shall see you guys in the next one. Take care.